Hey everybody, happy Saturday, June 29th of 2024. I know it has been quite a while. Um, I have done a few things, but I've also been doing a ton of work travel, um, so much so that uh, we're kind of just working towards um, running out of daylight and trying to get up as early as possible and then staying out of the sun um, during the, the middle of the day, trying to avoid heat stroke. Um, so lots of breaks and things like that, which means it's just not as productive and not as fun. Um, but in that same vein, um, yeah, here I am. It's the end of the day and I'm actually inside in the kitchen area. Um, I'll tell you why in a little bit, but uh, this will eventually be the breakfast nook kind of a side. So um, a little bit of a history. This wall here would have been the original wall. Um, and this would have all been porch. It actually would have wrapped around um, from that back porch all the way to this wall wasn't here and this would have actually been the front porch. So wrap around porches all over this house, right? At some point, pretty early on, they closed it in um, and you can tell that just by you know looking at this column and kind of seeing how they did all of that. The floor was redone um, to take out the slope in just this area. This will eventually probably become my pantry, um, but ironically, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take it out, make the repairs that I need, and tie everything back in, and then probably put it back in. Obviously, without some of the other issues, we're going to make it much more airtight. You probably can't see it now because of the sun going down, but there's a lot of light here, and that's all energy leakage and stuff like that, not to mention just all of the, the brick um, being quite conductive. But if you've been driving by the house, if you're local in the area, you've probably seen me out back with pieces of boards and I'm priming those and I've got a good stack going of siding. And that's kind of the plan is as I take this stuff out, I want to be able to go ahead and, and build back in a little bit um, so that everything's kind of enclosed and not just kind of left out to the elements because who knows um, what's going on. In the same vein, that was actually one of the other things that I did today was I went to the lumber yard and I got a few pieces of plywood um, because I'm unfortunately gonna have to do some more temporary closure. Um, and the reason for that is I can't get the materials that I need, which has been pretty much an issue since the pandemic. Um, so what, what I do have is I have the lumber, I have the siding, I've got a whole bunch of it primed, I've got air barrier, you know, we're gonna do the best we can with air barrier. Clearly we don't have expectations. It's gonna be completely airtight, but I've got what I need except the insulation. Um, that insulation is going through a nationwide um, kind of a back order situation. It's just taking a while. Um, the distributors that I have worked with so far are telling me 20 to 26 weeks. And a lot of times what has happened in the past is I get really close to getting it and then it goes to something else that's more important, right? Um, I understand, but I really need to start speaking up for myself um, because I can't close my walls without it. And it really does need to be that particular product uh, for a few reasons. It's kind of the combination of the material that I need. So this product is an exterior grade rigid mineral wool insulation. Um, one of the first reasons is acoustics. Fiberglass actually would probably be better and, um, and I will be putting that in a whole bunch of these walls. Uh, but in this particular case, you know, obviously acoustics we need because the railroad is right there and it's very disruptive. And in this particular room, we won't have a lot of soft surfaces because I don't want it to smell like whatever I fry. <laughs> and, and all I know how to cook is Southern food at this point. So um, we won't have a lot of soft surfaces. Therefore, everything's going to echo and be even worse um, and reverberate off of you know, all of these surfaces. So I need to stop as much of that noise coming through as possible. So um, mineral bullet is, we need some type of a fiber material, mineral bullet or fiberglass. So mineral bullet is, and then this particular mineral bullet is more rigid so I can slide it into places that I can't access um, because we're not gonna open up all of the walls. And then I need that material to also have a treatment to make it water repellent. So not every bit of mineral wool is, um, and this particular product does have that. So we sit and wait and we put up a whole bunch of plywood and we hope someday that that shortage will be resolved. Um, in the meantime, this is one of the biggest things that I really got to work on. And so right now I'm taking out the windows, uh, and that's also 
brings me to, to talk about why I'm in here and not out there. So I really should be out there showing you all of the details and everything. What I have done, if you drive by, you can see I've taken all of the trim on the outside off. Um, it was cedar probably again from like the 70s, 80s, 90s, something like that. And so not even close to historic. Um, but unfortunately, there is a huge wasp nest over here as one does at this house. And so I've got to wait for dusk when everything calms down so I can get them all. Um, I am sorry if you have an issue with me killing bugs, but they really will injure me in this particular case. They're more than welcome to go somewhere different. Um, so I need to wait until I can get after those and then I can resume a little bit of this work, but, um, I got all that pride off. Interesting thing is these windows also, they have screws to hold them in. <laughs> Um, which I thought was originally kind of funny. I'm like, wait a minute, you could have broken into this house by unscrewing the window the whole time. Um, so I did start working on the screws. I'm just not familiar with this type of window. It is a double paned um, window of some sort, um, has bullet holes in it, we're not keeping it. But um, <laughs> I can't seem to get it out. And that's the part that's interesting because I've looked at the fasteners, there's still a few in here, but I should at least be getting some movement. And I'm not sure how this window is here um, because even these screws, they're not long enough to actually go into anything. If you look at them, they're not going into any of the structure. Uh, so I don't know how this window is still in. And I have a fear, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm not right, um, but I have a fear that there is load on this wall that maybe it has shifted and there's actually some load on these windows which will make it harder to get them out. Um, that's not good because what I would like to do is take them out in one piece without any mess. Um, have I broken a window to get it out before? Yes. So in South Carolina, I was taking out um, some sliding glass doors and it was a load bearing wall. The wall had shifted over time right um, a block from the water so of course we see a lot of movement there and I got very frustrated I was going through a breakup at the time too and I may or may not have thrown a hammer through the window uh, which bounced off the first time it took a little bit to get it to break um, felt real good but then you have a big mess that you got to clean up so you know zero stars don't recommend on that method it is a possibility though so I'm hoping that's not the case um, we'll, we will go back with, though, um, we will build historic replicas out of wood. They will be, you know, waist height. So if you choose to cook dinner in your underwear, you can do that. Um, that's the plan. But for now, I uh, just need to get these out and then I have the plywood ready to go up and kind of keep everything, um, covered until we can, you know, fix all of that. Um, the other thing that I did want to point out, if I was on the other side, I would show you, I'll try and take some photos is that the way that these were framed in also led to uh, water damage and termites and all that good stuff too. Um, they were picture framed. If you're driving around, you kind of see houses where they just take the trim and just make a picture frame. It looks pretty, it looks modern, you know, those types of things. But what happens with this kind of window is there's nowhere for the water to go, but just sit under the sill. And so all of that was completely rotted out. Um, nobody's surprised by that. It, it really isn't going to matter because that wasn't original and we're taking it out anyways and we will rebuild. Um, but yeah, just kind of a good lesson learned that picture framing doesn't work like you think it does. Um, and it, it basically channels the water to stay at the window instead of to shed away from the window. Um, so that's what I'm doing here in the kitchen, um, kind of on my off time when I'm not um, in the sun trying to keep up with mowing or in the back trying to prime things and get ready for that or in the little house working on jacking and straightening that, that up, uh, which will have to be a separate video. So hopefully I can give you a little bit of an outside view tomorrow without getting stung and I'll have more exciting stuff to show, but that's what we're working on for now. So you guys take care, have a great rest of your weekend and we'll talk soon.